Within this chapter, Marx is mostly clarifying some previous concepts and also highlighting some distinctions within the labour process and its creation of value within a commodity. By the very act of adding new value, he preserves their former values. Since, however, the addition of new value to the subject of his labour and the preservation of its former value are two entirely distinct results produced simultaneously by the labourer during one operation, it is plain that this twofold nature of the result can be explained only by the twofold nature of his labour. Marx begins by observing that labour has a twofold nature. It performs two different functions that are also impossible to separate from each other. In the previous chapter, we saw how labour firstly preserves or transfers the existing values of other commodities into the production process, into the new commodity. Our £7 cotton being preserved into £7 cotton within the hat. Secondly, that the process of labour also creates new value. The actual process of preserving or transferring existing values into a new form is the labour process itself, and in doing so, it creates new value. Our hat has more value than the cotton alone. However, even though these two functions are performed by one single process, labour, and are impossible to separate from each other, we can observe how they still perform two very different functions within the labour process. For an example, let's again take our hat that takes six hours to make and is made from cotton. However, let's now imagine that we have a new machine that lets us make six hats in six hours, at six times fast as previous. In comparing the two, we can observe how the amount of value that is being preserved and transferred from the cotton is now six times greater than before. We're now transferring the value of six rolls of cotton in six hours, instead of just one roll. However, the amount of new value added by the labour process is six times lesser than previously. Labour is now able to produce one hat an hour, instead of in six hours. The amount of labour time required per hat is less, and so the new value added is also less. From this we can observe two conclusions. Firstly, the longer the labour process, the greater amount of new value is added to a commodity. Secondly, the faster the labour process over a given amount of time, the greater amount of previous values are transferred within that time. Corpses of machines, tools, workshops, etc. are always separate and distinct from the product they help to turn out. If we now consider the case of any instrument of labour during the whole period of its service, from the day of its entry into the workshop to the day of its banishment into the lumber room, we find that during this period, its use value has been completely consumed and therefore its exchange value completely transferred to the product. Marx's definition of constant capital is probably easier to think about as the capital that is invested in the means of production viewed from the perspective of the capitalist in regards to the production process. It is the tools, the machinery, the building and factory itself, the materials and commodities needed for production, the energy needed to provide power to the equipment that the capitalist needs to purchase from the market. The reason that this is constant capital is because none of these commodities create new value. Their value is simply transferred into the final product. Their respective values are a constant, like our cotton that is transferred to our hat. The new value is not created by the constant capital of cotton itself, but by the concrete useful labour that transforms the cotton into a hat. This is an important thing to note as it allows us to understand that none of these things create value. A machine, for example, that makes hats and costs our capitalists £20,000 and has a lifespan of, say, 20,000 hats before it breaks, doesn't create any new value. It simply transfers its existing value bit by bit with every hat made until it is all used up. In this example, £1 per hat. It's just a constant transfer of pre-existing value. 
Marx will return to this subject in greater detail throughout Capital, but it is a very interesting concept to think about, especially in the world we live in today, where we see automation and machinery increasingly taking over many factory jobs and beyond, and have to wonder, if they are not creating value, then where is this value coming from? Marx makes a brief distinction of aspects here within constant capital, that of raw materials and auxiliaries, whose values are used up and transferred instantly. Things like coal that is burnt to heat steam-powered machines, or sand that is turned into glass. These things transfer their value to the product in one go, as opposed to means of labour which depreciate or are used up and transfer their value bit by bit or slowly over time through labour processes, like our hat making machine, or even the factory building itself, which transfers its value into the products over many, many years. The main takeaway here, though, is that constant capital can never add more value to the product than they themselves possess. On the other hand, that part of capital, represented by labour power, does in the process of production undergo an alteration of value. It both reproduces the equivalent of its own value and also produces an excess, a surplus value, which may itself vary, may be more or less according to the circumstances. This part of capital is continually being transformed from a constant into a variable magnitude. Marx's definition of variable capital is probably easier to think about as the capital that is invested in labour power that needs to be purchased from the market, viewed from the perspective of the capitalist in regards to their production process. As we saw in the previous chapter, labour power is not only able to reproduce its own value, as in our example of working for six hours, it is also able to produce above and beyond this amount for 12, 18 or even 24 hours a day, the creation of surplus value. Unlike constant capital, which merely transfers the fixed amount of pre-existing value, the amount of value that labour power can create is not fixed. It first creates value and this amount can vary and so is variable. The technical conditions of the labour process may be revolutionised to such an extent that where formerly 10 men using 10 implements of small value worked up a relatively small quantity of raw material, one man may now, with the aid of one expensive machine, work up 100 times as much raw material. In the latter case, we have an enormous increase in the constant capital that is represented by the total value of the means of production used, and at the same time, a great reduction in the variable capital invested in labour power.